Hi, I'm Tim, and I've got Kyle and Jonathan here, and we are with W3 Develops, and we are going to continue on kind of a part two of us learning how to hack the site to um, grab information off Google Sheet and sort it into groups for the study groups and later on the build groups. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Does anybody, please say fun things about yourselves. Well. <laughs> Uh, let's see. My name's Kyle. I'm based out of Austin, Texas. I'm basically at this point a fully self-taught engineer. I've worked in Python, C Sharp, Bash, PowerShell, JavaScript, uh, C, C++, systems, networking, and basically anything IT or technology related. <laughs> how, how, well, I, I, want, I want one more thing. How old are you again? 22. I just turned 22. <laughs> wow. Wow. You it's dialed, dude. Dying you passion. dialed. <laughs> it's a dying passion of mine. <laughs> Man, that's, a, that's impressive, dude. That's an impressive portfolio. I tell you what. All of it's been in bits and pieces. I don't know these technologies. I've worked with these technologies and these languages and different things. But that's how it works. I mean, you're only, you're moving so fast in this tech world now that, oh, I got a project. I got to learn this piece to do the project. Yeah, I'm not a shmi. Everyone's going to be jack of all trades, basically, until you find the niche. So where, where do you, who do you work for? Are you freelance or you work for a firm? No, so currently I do data analysis for a company called Capsh. Uh, we are a tolling company. So we build the systems and toll roads that allow people to take tolls. Uh, we're, in, we're a multinational company. We're in the U.S., we're in Austria, Australia, Canada, um, basically everywhere. And we don't just do tolling, but we do... Uh, traffic management, we also do like parking, train, um, and a bunch of other types of systems. Cool, cool. Uh, I, I'm over in Eureka, California, and I'm working as a small business development um, program assistant, program associate, uh, helping people get connected to their hopes and dreams. So I do a lot of intakes with people who have no idea what they're doing business-wise. But I had done a JavaScript boot camp a number of years ago and then got away from code, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back into mentoring and teaching, and Jonathan's been awesome in helping me find a platform to do that. Nice. I'm trying to think. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Jonathan. Oh, oh no. Oh, uh, we recently uh, acquired GGB out in, uh, out in California, the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, nice. The whole road nice. that's going out there, that's our company. Nice, oh, nice. Oh, that's cool, dude. That's sounds like you really have some super cool, man. That's cool. that's neat. Sounds like you have some job security then. Uh, kind of, sort of, not really. I'm in no man's land right now. Uh, well, crossing fingers, crossing <laughs> fingers. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and jump in. I'm going to share my screen, uh, and you all should see a couple windows, and I'm going to go live. Cool. So this is uh, the development, well, it's the development branch for uh, what I was trying to do to sort the study groups. Um, and if you were watching the last video, uh, basically, we have this wonderful Google form, um, email, username, technology, through your commitment, and when you want to start your groups. Um, actually, that's what it looks like on my end. Um, and then it pumps the information into a spreadsheet. And that then gets sorted by this hacky script and ends up uh, on the W, will end up on the W3 develops page. So people can see where they're at, what their technology, what time they want to do it at. Um, it also groups them into groups of six. I think Jonathan had been talking about wanting to group that into eight whatever works that's easily fixable yeah, yeah I'll, I'll probably do like 20 like 10 20 you know for like for, for as we grow mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. cool um and so i'm just going to kind of go through uh jonathan and i just went through uh, the basic kind of setup in the script so all i did I'm, was I'm that video. all i did was um basically took the original w the the landing page for w3 develops and i just you know cloned it and then added, um, you know, changed a few things. We have this section here where the group, li group lists get attached. Um, 
And so basically the script is going to look for this ID study groups, and this is a bootstrap container, and I'm just using bootstrap classes to simplify things uh, at this point. This is basically how I view development. You get something up, you get it running, you get the code clean, and then you iterate to a better solution. Um, as long as you're in that kind of agile motion of, oh, this is what we're working on, we're gonna get something done, we're gonna go back and look to see how we can improve it. I think this is important. Uh, a lot of what, talking with Jonathan and being in the, um, being in the, you know, in the Discord a little bit, uh, a lot of times we're, I notice we're stuck in brainstorming mode. Like, oh, how, what's the way to do this? What's the way to do this? And I think uh, it would, it's going to help us to have something that we want to fix. So we know what, so we can like make some like better uh, decisions about a technology to use that we can all learn together and, and keep iterating on. So again, this is just temporary. This is going to help people feel the user experience is going to be different. So people would go to the site, they sign up on the form, they go to the, the study groups page. Again, they're going to end up in the study groups page and they'll be able to see themselves in a group. Eventually, uh, what I'm imagining that we're going to end up doing is people will sign up so they won't see all of this. They'll just see, they can go to their, uh, their profile or whatever and they'll see exactly what group they're in with the other people. They won't see everybody else's. But, you know, just moving forward for now. Um, the script is pretty easy. I'm not going to go crazy into detail about it. Uh, did a lot of that just recently in another video. Um, but I wanted to go down here to how I'm sorting. Um, if you remember, Jonathan, uh, before we had all the GSX stuff. And I've simplified that so now it's more readable where I can just, for each person, so basically, uh, uh, Kyle, uh, for each person that signs up, it, uh, in the Google Sheet, it comes in as an object in the Google Sheet. I bring all the data back as a string. You have to bring it back as a string because of cross-site scripting issues. Right. Uh, and then I have to... Uh, parse that in or have to remove extra characters at the beginning and the ends. Uh, and then I can um, JSON parse it into an actual proper, proper JSON object. And then I can, you know, do look up with the JSON object uh, by technology commitment and beginning. These here correspond basically to what's going on here. Uh, but quickly, what happens is it does a sort. I have, again, it's very hard coded. It does a sort and it pushes people into the array based on that conditional. The first op, the zero position item in that array is just basically the title for the uh, bootstrap cards. And then it's going to push, you know, depending on what you, what you've selected is what you want to do. It pushes you into one of these arrays and then it generates that stuff. Uh, so let's see where I was. So again, uh, this is just the grab group function that does fetch. That's the ES six syntax to do in a URL call, a good, go to an API and get the data, uh, turns it into string, removes the extra characters, parses it in JSON, and then it returns the sorted array. Um, the beauty is this this new parse here that that's the that's the real addition that's the one of the main additions from the uh, proof of concept that we just went over to the new to this new code that's actually on, on the development branch um, I actually created a new branch here because I'm gonna have to do some cleaning up of this code uh, later later today and the next day it is working obviously but there's some extra stuff I need to get rid of what new parse does is it takes that array and for each of the items in this JSON feed entry, it was, um, I don't know if I still have it up. Let me, yeah, I think I already got rid of it. Yeah, I already got rid of it. Basically it was a mult, it was a huge nested set of JSON with a lot of information we didn't need and we just wanted the, uh, the, these specific things. So just for readability's sake, there was this extra appending of GSX uh, to each of, the, 
each of the headings that we uh, need to search by. And for some reason, what Google Sheets was doing is it was creating a, um, a very strange, a really strange object to me. It would have GSX technology would be the property and then the value would be another object that was dollar sign T and the actual value. So all this new parse does is it simplifies the object uh, for more readability. Uh, and I can, let me return that. Uh, so you can see basically what I'm saying here. Whoops. VS code strikes again. Right? Gets in the way. No, it does not. VS code is love along with uh, Windows sub system Linux and some other things. Oh, I love VS Code. I just, I'm, with every update, I like, how do I turn off the pop-up that they just gave me to look uh, at, you know? You know, it kills me the automatic, um, where, where it automatically fills it in for you. Like, I got, I would always end up with um, extra brackets, uh, angle brackets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically, this was a much, this is what's coming back. Technology, commitment, beginning name for each of the you know people this is their discord username this is when they want to start this is their commitment they want to give us and this is the technology they want to study and i just wanted to simplify this because i don't need any of the rest of the information i just need to know these four things to do the sorts and if i need to do anything else with the people otherwise that's what i need to do and again remember that this is probably going to be uh have to do user auth and you're going to have a class uh if you use javascript in whatever code that you actually push to a real backend, you'd be creating class and you'd be creating new users and that would all be stored inside the database and we'd be doing SQL calls or, or whatever database calls that you want to pull this off. This is a hacky thing. This is the backend. You know, it's just a Google Sheet. Um, and I'll talk now a little bit about how that operates. Um, before I go into talking more about how the UL, how the actual uh, HTML is dynamically created. So here, uh, where's it at? This is study link. So this is the, if you notice here at the top, it says this is docs.google.com.spreadsheet. But here the study link is https.spreadsheets.google.com. Uh, front slash feeds. It's slightly different, but this value here is the key from here. Now, you, my understanding, and Kyle, maybe you can jump, chime in here. I think you probably have a little bit more knowledge than I do about maybe uh, the security of this. Um, it's because I have access to the spreadsheet and, you know, uh, uh, Jonathan created it. Even if I had this link and the key, I couldn't get into the spreadsheet Send because, me the link. huh? Send me the link real quick and I'll test it. Okay, cool. Just, I'll put it into the, are you up on Discord? Mm -hmm. He's in the, uh, the sorting um, algorithm uh, team uh, right there at the top. I see that. I don't think we ha that anybody has access to it because on the Google side you have to be you have to be shared to it. So Google is basically handling the handling the auth is what I think. Hmm. But I could be wrong. If that's the case. Well, then. You might have to take out that uh, that semicolon at the end. There it goes. Yeah. Well, that's that's the actual. The second one is the actual spreadsheet. Oh. On that, on that first link, you, uh, you might have to take out the uh, semicolon. And, and the, the, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I have access to that. From the that. second link or from the first link? The second link. Okay. Right. So the second, the first link, that's not what goes into the spreadsheet or goes into the, into the code. It's the first link that goes into the code. Yeah, no, I can see this. The second link that you sent me, I mm -hmm. can see. I can see that spreadsheet. I have access to that. 
but with the first link you can't no okay that's well, good then yeah try the first I'm link trying to figure, well i'm trying to figure that out right now Hopefully. okay but somebody could kind of like just hack that and like maybe like to well the like second link isn't in the code the second link is, but if the first link is in the code, then they could get, they, people would have access to change that if we, if this was up in a open, it, and I don't think that there's a way, it's not like what you can do if you're, uh, uh, have a development database up where you can um, have uh, environment variables to hide the keys. But I think all that they would have to do if that key at the end of the second link is the same as the first link. Yeah. Uh, and just put it in. Yeah, all they would have to do is put docs.google.com forward slash spreadsheet and then the forward slash D forward slash the link. And that would probably do it, huh? Uh, they might have to have this GID number. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Cool. But I'm not sure. And again, like I said, this is temporary. Right. And a lot of people use this uh, Google Sheet hack. Here, this is using Google Spreadsheet as your back end. It's a way to make something simple and prototype something. I think they're going to have to have that O U I O U A number. Yeah, that is actually this here, this O U A. This is basically what tells uh, when you make the API call when you're doing the fetch, that number basically is looking for the first tab. So if this is a spreadsheet with seven or eight tabs, I could select, I could pull the data off at of any individual tab and that's what that number is for. Okay. But yeah, that second link you sent, that's, a, that's, a, that's just a shareable link. Right, that's a shareable link to the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So it was Kyle's doing that. Basically, once we get the data from the, after it's sorted, we then go through and create the, U, the actual list, uh, unordered lists that are gonna get appended to, um, or gonna get a, attached to the, to the web page. Again, here where it says where the group lists are attached. This ID study groups, I've done a query, document query selector call, study groups. And then that's what create UL takes. It takes the selector and then it takes the, uh, the spreadsheet for each type of group. And there's 24 categories at this point. Uh oh, oh, uh, Kyle's got the hacker face on. <laughs> Deep thought. What do you think, Kyle? Mm, trying to find the right tool to get this, but I get a bunch of I get a bunch of data back. I'm going to send it to you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Well, I was just trying to get it to format properly with an extension. Uh, what's the viewer that you use to format JSON data that returns back to you in the browser? Uh, I've had to pull all the extra characters off, but you can but you can always use like um, well, I don't know what you're asking. Are you asking like what I did in the code? Or what no, you, uh, when you make a call to an API in the browser and then it fetch. returns JSON data. Well, you have to, well, what I did is I used fetch and then I uh, had to take characters off the front and the back of the string. Here, I'll show you that code. I had to take, I had a, uh, it's a readable stream when the data comes back. So you have to convert it to a string and then uh, whatever it looks like, you'll have to look to see what the, what the data actually looks like. So it sounds like you're saying that you're getting you're getting a string back, mm -hmm. and does it have what looks like JSON data? Mm -hmm. Well, then that's probably it's all in the then it's all a it's exposed. Yeah, hold on one second. I'll send you a file. Yeah, that's great. And then I can take a look at it. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay.